Hi, and welcome to my parlor. Today we're going to make... I'll be right back. Welcome back to my parlor. I'm Priscilla Andrews with Prairie Parlor. And today, in cooperation with tinypandora.com, we're going to be making this and the matching earrings. But the interesting thing about it is we're going to learn how to do a sheet of Makamagani along with highlighting some of the parts with dry brushing. It's a technique that's quick and easy and will give your pieces just a little extra pizzazz. Let's get started. Here's some of our supplies. I always add a little bit of the other colors that I'm using to my white to make a more unified color. I throw a little transparent in there also. A really handy tool is going to be your soft sharp blade. The texture plate I'm going to use today is one that I made myself with my extruder. I like the depth that I can get with that. Last but not least is going to be our final filigree. That comes from a Macon's mold that you can get that comes with a bunch of flowers and stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is run the white through on the thickest setting on your machine. And then I ran the black and the gold through onto a three on my atlas. And then you stack the black in between the gold and white and run it through your machine on the thickest setting. And then cut that sheet in half again and put it on top and roll it out together. So I sprayed my texture sheet with some water, but I wiped it off the top and left it in the grooves so that the plate doesn't stick so much. Now I'm going to roll as hard as I can. You should have heard me grunting when I did this to get those pieces deep down in the grooves. Now, ooh, did it work? Yes, looks fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put the texture plate on the other side and roll that out also. Voila, here we are with that wonderful sharp flimsy blade because we're going to be shaving off the top layer of this as best we can. And I'm gonna tell you, when you take those pieces off, keep those. We're gonna use those later. So make sure you save those pieces off. And then, if you do it better than I do, <laughs> this is what it'll look like a little quicker than I made it. Run it through your pasta machine until it's smooth and then get your pattern that you're going to cut out for the shape of the pendant. And then go ahead and cut that pendant out of your sheet of clay. Voila! Now let's talk about the fun stuff. I just take a roll of clay and I just push it into the mold. I don't want it to get real thick, but just push it into the mold and there you go. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to cut the fine edges out with your X-Acto knife so that you have a sharp mold when you're done. Here's the first one and we're going to go ahead and get that situated around the edge of that pendant. Now put it wherever you want to but you'll see what's going to look right and then just bend those edges to fit the side. Now let's do the top. Again with black clay we just stuff the cast until we come out with that. But we have to make a few adjustments here because after you tuck that side down, you've got some overlap there. So what I do is I take my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to cut off 
In this case, just that end piece there, um, you can decide how you want to do it or if you want to cut it off of the top piece. When you put it together on your design, you'll know what you need to do. So now I'm going to have to cut the bottom arms off of that top piece there to make it fit correctly. So I'm just going to fit it in there and make a mark where I need to cut it. And there we go. Now I take a piece of scrap clay, if you want to, if you have it around, just to add a little bit more thickness to the pendant. I'm going to trim just around the major parts because now we're going to be adding a black back and you don't want to have to trim that fine stuff twice. So this is on a number three on my atlas and what I do I texturize the back with 36 or 80 sandpaper. It gets rid of those problems you have with sanding and marks and stuff on the back. So that, that works great for me. Now we're going to lay that down, put the pendant on it, and we're going to cut all that stuff off of the top and around. Have fun with that. Ha ha. I hope you're better than I am. There, we're done. Now I run this through my extruder and we are going to make a strip all of the way around the pendant so that the sides aren't exposed. One of the things that's really handy in tucking in those spaces is the tinypandora.com cane blender bender. So now we're going to put the bale on the back of the pendant. And I just run a sheet on my thickest setting and I cut a beveled edge and roll a, it's a shish kebab that I cut up into pieces. And we're just going to roll a little tube out of that and cut another beveled edge. And now roll it together and that beveled edge that's there, just take some of the Sculpey liquid clay and we're going to fill that edge in there with that liquid clay. Now we're going to press that onto the back of the pendant and push it down a, just a little bit and squish it around just a little bit to get that liquid clay now I bake it in cornstarch so that we don't have any problems with the pendant warping. Now let's make some beads. If you kept those things like I told you to, now you'll find out what you use them for. I took the scrap clay and wrapped it up and then I run it through the pasta machine. Now I'm going to just take a cutter to get uniform size beads and I'm just going to roll a ball out of this. Now you're going to take those pieces that you trimmed off earlier and you're just going to wrap them around these beads. Put as many as you want or as little as you want depending on how much you have and there you go. Make as many beads as you want in all the sizes that you want. Now for the matching earrings. I'm just going to use that top shell part for the top of the earrings the same way we did before. Then I take a little ball, sorry about my messy fingers, but I put the ball there and then we're going to bake those things together. Look at that. Through the miracle of video we have everything that was made the day before this morning. Now we take a flat straight and rather firm brush for the dry brushing. I just used gold craft paint and I just take some paint out of the lid and what you want to do is you want your brush to be saturated but you don't want it to be wet and then we are just going to run that as flatly as we can over the raised parts and look at the definition that comes up. Do the edges and now once again you're going to see how those 
black borders just start to pop when you get that gold paint dry brushed on there. You can add as much as you want or as little as you want to get different effects. Just keep your brush full of paint but not wet. An option here if you want to drill holes in the bottom parts of the decoration there so that you can hang charms from them. I chose to put three charms on my piece. Thank you again for watching.